The process of direct democracy has started because we're getting the message out there. And once we actually talk to people, and there's a lot of anger out there because they think we're the same. But once you actually get talking to people, they actually love the system because they like the idea of having a say, because that's the way democratic systems should work. They were voted in here to do a job with promises of not paying back foreign gamblers on the stock exchange. If they're not going to do it, vacate the office and put someone in who will do it. It's the first time that I have ever in my life protested, but I feel so strongly, you know. This is the first time, of course, I've been at home thinking, why don't we all just get out and protest and let it be known that we object to this. This is our country and we've just been sold out and been made fools of. I never had reason or cause to protest prior to this. The reason I came out today is because I've been raised in a young family and I don't believe there's any future for my children here. Following Ben Gilroy because I, I, I've never ever protested at anything in my life before, but I'm tired of the rage that's in me at the injustice that's been done to the Irish people. In our first constitution, direct democracy was in there. Our forefathers left it as a protection. They took it out and that's why the people feel unprotected. The main parties have a thing called representative democracy. So that democracy is where you trust TDs to make the right decisions for you. Unfortunately, over the last number of years, there's been some horrendous decisions which don't represent the people at all. With the likes of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, they have a party whip system. So you could have 100 TDs and the party whip tells them what way to vote. That's not even democracy. Direct democracy is different. It comes from the people up, where representative democracy comes from the top down and tells you that's how it's gonna be. The direct democracy, the people say, this is the way we want it, and that feeds up. So that's how the two systems basically work. say, on the night of the bondholder payments or stuff like that. If we had direct democracy that night in the room, I don't believe we would have agreed to bail out the bondholders because the people would have the right of referendum. That's how democracy works, direct democracy. Like, you want to bail out the bondholders, you ask the people. So instead of telling them, that's more dictatorship than democracy. And why are the government crippling me and my family's chances of a good, decent future to pay back bondholders who speculated on the market. It's taken now without the consent of the people. We were never given a, a, a vote on this, as you probably know yourself. I think I protested once in my life. Uh, I'm not a radical. I'm a, uh, you could say I'm a roaring capitalist, Democrat. I was self-employed, I was in business for many years. And I lost everything, including my family home. Uh, I lost it because I paid back the banks. People think, well, if we had direct democracy, wouldn't there be a referendum every week? The truthful answer is no. I mean, there wouldn't be. First of all, in the Constitution, you needed 75,000 signatures to call a referendum. So you would really only get that on major issues. I mean, if you want everybody in the country to wear pink shoes, well, you won't get 75,000 signatures. So that's your barometer, really, of, of how, how much support that would have. But also, let's say on the major decisions, like bailing out the banks, would we have called a referendum on that? Would we have a referendum on that? And most people say yes, but I say no, we wouldn't have. Because the politicians would have known that they would never have got away with bailing out the banks with direct democracy. But because they have the representative the system, they know the people are powerless and they can basically do what they want. So they can tax your homes, bail out their gambling friends in Europe, do whatever they wish. You're powerless. Okay, you may have a few demonstrations and a few marches. We'll get over that. But basically you're powerless to do anything. So that's why they can make crazy decisions. The other candidates in this by-election, I believe, are genuinely good, nice people. That's my genuine, uh, genuine opinion. However, they can't change anything. I mean, I've heard some of them saying they have a strong voice. Maybe they should be on X Factor. But in, in the political system that they live in, they're under a party whip. They don't have a voice. I, I believe that me uh, voted in with the Direct Democracy Party can even affect change now. I mean, if people um, look me up on YouTube, you will see I was fighting for people's rights for the last number of years without ever thinking of getting into this nasty game of politics. And I keep asking the same question. Yeah. The registrar gives the order. Yes. Then he puts on a sheriff. 
sheriff's hat and tells you go and uh, repossess the yeah, home. Exactly, and yeah. you think that's fair. That's right. And yeah. lawful. Yeah. No, well, I'm telling you it's not. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking the Gardaí today to uphold common law, which they're sworn to do. And this is not yeah. common law. Now, also under the Constitution, a man's house is inviolable under the Constitution, except as to law. What law did this man break? I'm not saying he broke any law. Right, but that's why you're oh, here. He broke no law. <laughs> I haven't met anyone, and I'm not saying it's because of me. It's just everyone in the country is sick of this. You know, the bank sending in receivers on businesses is a joke. Uh, they proved to the detriment of the country they couldn't run, uh, run their own business, and now they want to send in receivers to run the, the people's business. But, you know, we can actually affect change. And the, me the people of Mead East would be the first to enjoy direct democracy. So let's say we have an important bill coming up in the House to be voted on. I wouldn't vote on that and then come back to the people of Mead East and say, this is how I voted. What I would do is have several meetings in hotels in the major towns around the Mead East constituency and ask, how would you like me to vote on this bill? Then they dictate to me and I vote accordingly. That's how it comes up. So I present the bill, pros and cons, you ask the people, they tell me what way to vote, and I vote accordingly. And remember, with direct democracy, we also have recall. If you vote a TD in, you can vote them out. So if they're not doing the job, in other words, if they want it this way and I vote it another way, I can be recalled. There's nobody else that does that. For anybody that thinks this is an untested theory of direct democracy, well, it actually works fairly well. In Switzerland, for instance, they've had it for some time, I believe around 800 years. Um, Switzerland have this, the highest standard of living in the world and the best services in the world. They pay 36% of their GDP for them services, while we pay almost 70% of our GDP for some of the worst services in the world. People are dry, dying on trolleys and stuff. You would never see that in Switzerland. And it's because of direct democracy. The politicians are accountable and the people are, uh, have a full say in the running of the major issues in the country. Now people often say to me, well, if the Irish vote on should we pay tax or not, they'll vote that down. Well, that's probably true because we are already taxed to the hilt. I mean, you take your home, for instance, you ask the people, do they want to pay tax on their home? They're going to say no. But there's a reason for that. They've already paid way over the odds for the house in the first place. They've got high interest rate charges on their mortgages. They have all the money sucked out of the economy by paying back bondholders. They have paid huge VAT and um, stamp duty on the homes already. And now with the few measly pound that they may have left, you want to tax the home. Sorry, of course that should be voted down. The people aren't idiots. But you take Switzerland on the other hand. They last year agreed to up their taxes. Now, albeit for a short period of time, I think it was five years, they agreed to up their taxes. So they would put some new infrastructure in that they felt was needed. Then they'll reduce the taxes again. But remember, they have the highest standard of living. You know, so that's it working correctly. The people are wise enough. And if it's put properly to the people, they'll make the right decisions. Unfortunately, the decisions in our country are made by unelected Europeans, and it's secretive, and it's not democratic. So in summary of the two systems, as I said, the representative democracy one which we have now is they'll make decisions and they'll force it down on you, good or bad. But with our system from the bottom up, decisions can be made, if it comes down and it's a bad decision, the people have the right to say, no, you must overturn that, and you can actually overturn bad legislation as well. That's the difference, the people have the power, and that's why our slogan is returning the power to you. And it was a power left for you by your grandfathers in your first constitution. People have to get up and be seen now, and it's up to everybody now, because everyone thinks they don't count. But if we all stand together, we all count. This is all our lives, all our futures. This is our money that is being wasted. If we sit on the sideline, Nothing will ever happen.